minutes to communicate uh, about something that's going to happen in a few days. And I'm not exactly sure what the document will look like, but I know a week from yesterday, we will be seeing and hearing about the Commonwealth's budget for the next biennial period. And I want to start with this. Over the three years, and again, I want to thank my colleagues for allowing me to hold the seat uh, and be the individual that represents the institution of the Senate presidency. But over that three year period, what I've tried to do is be fair and an honest broker and give honest assessment and criticism where it would be constructive, not for the purpose of being mean spirited or in any way with ill will, compliment individuals on what they do when it is appropriate. Uh, it's been recognized and we've talked about this. Uh, Governor Brashear and I uh, worked in a very candid manner, not in the public eye, not trying to play gotcha politics, not trying to generate news stories because it's really not helpful to the institution because it says some of the individuals who are here uh, on this Senate floor, they like to write stories in the newspapers. Senator from Franklin has probably the most experience of anybody in this chamber about how the press likes to write stories. But to that extent, I complimented Governor Bashir for the way he dealt with us over the three years that I've been the Senate president and we had a totally new leadership group. Uh, we didn't play things out in the press. I've said he was very good from that perspective in holding confidences. Do we agree on things? Not always. But we did find solutions to a lot of different problems. Uh, we were able to get a budget on time for the first time in many years, both the transportation and general fund budget. I've said they've done a very good job of managing the state health care plan, which is that for state employees and teachers. But we also have disagreements. And here's where one of the things that we disagreed upon was the implementation of Obamacare, which was done by a unilateral decision. And I think it's well known and has been well played out. And I've been saying this along with the Senator from Kenton for many months. That's a potential $250 million hit above and beyond what our normal growth and expenses are over the biennial period. Then you have the pension system. And I have defended the institution of the legislature, not just the Senate, but the institution of the legislature, that we, the legislature, and I hope the press would report this in bold print because they don't often do it, that we as a legislative body, both the House and Senate, have funded at the levels that we have been requested to fund and sometimes even going above those levels for contributions to the pension system. We have to rely on the executive branch and we did for the 20 years I have been here. That is true and no one, and I, I compliment the speaker, the leaders of the House, the Republicans and Democrat leaders of the Senate because we've had both in my tenure. We have done that. But we didn't always get good information apparently because now we are here today. And we know that starting at the town, downturn of the economy around 2008, that we weren't getting good information and we did not, because we did not have appropriate information to make contributions to the system. Plus we didn't know some things about decisions that were made and the internal workings of both systems. But be that as it may, here's where we stand with a budget a document getting ready to be delivered to us. And I'm not exaggerating this in any shape, fashion, or form. We are having good growth of revenues. If you look and see what the consensus forecast, and I'm gonna round out about $300 million of new money this year. And then another 300 million in the second year. Well, you combine those, that's about 900 million total that we have. Well, people, who are listening and members of this body know that you have natural cost, consumer pricing index, rate of inflation. So we're not even going to consider that right now as normal costs. Because I think everybody in this room and anybody who runs a household knows that their expenses are generally a little bit greater year after year. Take that and set that aside. Where are we when the budget comes down, knowing there are going to be those costs? Between the ARC payment for KERS, the payments needed to start stabilize KTRS, 
the potential exposure from the Obamacare and the Affordable Health Care Act at a quarter of a billion dollars. Jane Driscoll, Governor Bashir's budget director said there was a half a billion dollar hole. There is. Because we can't not do these things. We cannot prioritize around them. To do so will make a greater hole and make greater uh, the responsibility of future General Assemblies of trying to fill that hole. Instead of a half a billion this year, it'll go up because the payments are not being made. So to that extent, Mr. President, members of the body, and the reason I went through this recount of me being here and what I've tried to communicate, I had individuals who came into my office looking for pay increases today. I'm not going to say who they are. I've had people who wanted to meet, me, meet with me about potential bonding projects and capital construction. This is my opinion, but after 20 years, even though with good revenue growth, our expenditures have far, far exceeded that revenue growth. And as much as I would like to walk in here and many things that I thought would be possible in this session, they're not. They're not. And if we are truly going to honor those commitments to the individuals who are currently in KERS and KTRS and those who will qualify for both systems, I do not think this budget that will be delivered to us a week from last night will be something that will be, for lack of better terms, very pretty. I heard Speaker Richards say that we're going to have to make tough decisions. I agree with Speaker Richards. There are going to be tough, tough decisions made because the bill has come due. And I could see a lot of adverse consequences due to years, and I don't want to place the blame, but I will defend the legislature, years of bad information being distributed. And I'm saying years, well beyond. I'm not laying this at one administration or another, but years of bad information being given to us. But we have funded at those levels requested of us. But I think this budget that will be introduced and proposed by the executive branch will be one of the most austere budgets that I will have seen in my 20 years here in the General Assembly. Thank you, Mr. President. I told a group this morning, and I apologize for not, for if anybody thinks I shouldn't say it politically for the floor of this Senate, from, particularly from my party. I said the problem the Democratic Party and the penalty we've paid for the reduction in offices that we hold these days is because we had a good foundation in offering need for those who needed it, but yet we did not have the foresight or the determination to keep it from those who did not need it. But that still doesn't justify doing away with the program. We still owe the obligation, and being the individual that I am from a faith standpoint, I believe in what my Lord told me, to feed those that are hungry, clothe those that are naked, visit those in prison, take care of my little ones, take care of the elderly. But I do not believe in a hand in the trough that does not deserve those dollars. But I say to my friends in the majority party in this Senate, the one problem that we've come to, and my friends in the License and Occupation Committee know exactly what I'm talking about, we can't even increase the fee of a boiler inspector or electrician's license or a carpenter's license or any professional license because it's a tax increase. You know who's paying the bill then? The taxpayers are paying it. Why not let the individual who seeks the license pay it? There's several dollars there. 
Someone else mentioned something to me the other day, and it's relatively simple, Mr. President, but I want you to join me in, in, in talking even to the governor who probably doesn't know it. I didn't know it. In my local county here in Franklin County, we authorized the sale of e-cigarettes. My jail returned several thousand dollars back to the fiscal court this year because they sell an e-cigarette for $8.70 a piece out there at that jail. But our penitentiary system prohibits the sale of e-cigarettes. Let's start selling e-cigarettes. and We need to look for ways to get money into this treasury. And I do not preclude some sensible tax reform. We had a study of four years ago, and as far as I know, we have yet to take action on a single element. I'm blaming both houses of that report from tax reform. Not a single one.